scripture. It's been on my heart. I will not get these done today, and if the Lord will allow us, we'll preach some more on these verses. Very familiar. You know them all probably by heart. Amen. Don't know that I've ever preached on all these uh, or not. Cannot remember, but uh, just these have been on my heart uh, for a little while. The book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, and uh, the very first verse. And uh, so let's read some. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Want to talk to us? Probably just cover the first two that today. Be the Lord's willing. Amen. But uh, Sermon on the Mountain. This particular scriptures are called the Beatitudes. Amen. And uh, most of the time, blessed means happy. Amen. Most of the time, it means happy. Amen. Psalms 1 and 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in counsel of the ungodly, sitteth in the seat of the scornful, or standeth in the way of the sinner, so forth. That means happy. That means happy. Amen. And, uh, but these, uh, these particular, and I thought about this, and uh, I really feel, uh, and, and when you hear this, I believe you'll agree, approved of God. Approved of God. Amen. Approved of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Something that God has ordained and approved. His approval is upon uh, this for our life. And it ought to be our, uh, the, the char characteristics of our life. Amen. And it's for the born again believer. It's for us today. Not only uh, uh, some of these for the sinner. Not all of them, but maybe one and two, but most of them are for the born-again believer, and so it should, we should take on the, these characteristics for our life. Amen. And uh, I just, uh, 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 the very uh, first one is, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. It's not talking about materialistic things, amen. Nothing to do with that, but when we realize in our heart Ah, oh, that we're broken without God, that we're empty without God, that we have nothing without God. Amen. That, that, that He desires us to have that broken heart, that contrite spirit. Amen. And when we have that, can I tell you, He can help us. He can do more for us than the world ever thought about. But we must humble ourselves that He can exalt us. Amen. If I try to exalt myself, I'm going to fall. Amen. Like with those that we studied about uh, in Genesis this morning. Amen. So um, he, uh, he walks uh, with the humble. He resists the proud, don't he? Amen. He resists the proud. He puts them to the side because if I don't feel like I know everything, God can't help me. Amen. 
But if, if I allow God, say, Lord, I'm broken, I'm empty, I don't know how, but I know that you know how, then guess what? That opens a big door for the Lord to come and sup with me, and I can sup with him, I can drink with him, and oh, he'll just commune with me. But I got to realize in my heart, in deep within me, Lord, I'm empty without you. I, I can't walk this walk without you. I cannot talk this talk uh, without you. Uh, Lord, be a lamp unto my feet, uh, a light unto my path. Uh, amen. Lord, be what I, I need for today. Amen. And, uh, tomorrow will be different. Uh, but Lord, I come to you broken this morning. Uh, I'm empty without you. Uh, oh, I laid me down to sleep uh, and the Lord uh, sustained me. See, that's uh, uh, the, the, that confidence uh, that we have in God uh, that he's going to do just for us. Uh, and when we empty ourselves, we have the confidence and the trust and the faith. God, you're going to fill me. Amen. Amen. See, I need to empty me of myself. Amen. Myself, me, myself, and I, I can do it. I know how. That gets me in trouble. But when I come to him, sin, Lord, I really don't know. Lord, I don't have an understanding. I don't know tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds my hand. I know who holds my future. Amen. I know that I know that I know. That's what God is warning us. Those that are poor in spirit, poor in spirit, amen, humble in spirit, we realize our own sin, our spiritual emptiness, our poverty, amen. How many knows before we got saved, we had to realize, God, I need something more for my life. God, I need something more. Amen. I'm so glad one day I realized, God, I am so empty. I'm working good. I got a vehicle to drive. I got food on my table. I got a good place to sleep. But I'm empty. Amen. I'm empty. And that's when the Lord came to my rescue. Amen. He pulled me out. He brought me out. And He began to fill me up. Little by little. Amen. Oh, every day, every day, the Lord began to fill my heart and to fill my life. Let me just tell you what the Lord done. I can only tell you for myself. Amen. The Lord began to direct me to read His Word. Amen. He began to direct me to write things down in His Word. Because that's the way uh, I remember things. And everybody's different. Uh, if I write it down, I can remember it. Amen. Uh, oh, I can just read over it and I may not remember it. Uh, but if I write it down, uh, I remember it. And the Lord, see, that's the way the Lord began to fill my heart. Uh, because I began to write it down and I began to remember it. Amen. Uh, and my emptiness began to fill up uh, with His Word. Amen. Uh, oh, His Spirit came by my way fill me up. Amen. Uh, I still believe in an infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it may not be popular in this day, uh, but I believe there's still an evidence uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, and the power of God uh, that we need in this end time uh, uh, generation. Uh, it fills us up. Uh, oh, it overflows. Uh, he anoint our head with oil. Our cups uh, will overflow in the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Oh, it brings us to a greater knowledge, a greater understanding, riches in Him, amen? Riches in her heart, riches in her heart. I want riches in my heart. Don't misunderstand me. I love things of this world. I really do. I really do, and we all do. But Lord, give me the spiritual things, the riches of the heart. Oh, just give me the treasures in heaven. Give me the treasures in heaven. Let me be poor myself and be rich in you. Amen. Amen. The blessings of the Lord. And we know this verse maketh one rich. And it don't add one bit of sorrow with it. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Lord, we need riches in this end time. Spiritual riches. Amen. We need some spiritual 
things in this end time generation. Amen. Emptying myself of self. Amen. Emptying me of self. Emptying me of self. And allowing the Spirit of the Lord to fill me up. Allowing His Word to fill me up. Amen. And then what am I? I'm much stronger. I can bless others because He has filled me up. Amen. I've become poor in this life to be rich in Him. Not many understands that. We can have all the things of this world, and that's good. We, you know, I want us to have all the things of this world and blessings. But the greatest riches is what's inside of us. Amen? What's inside of us? That's the riches that cannot be taken away. Amen? What I have in this life is going to fade. It's, I've just borrowed it. it the Lord just gave it to me. But what I have inside is going to last forever. It's going to last forever. Amen? And so, I want to be poor of myself that I can be rich in Him. You see my picture today? Amen? Oh, if, if, if so much of this world and so many in high places, if they could rid themselves, rid of, of themselves and allow the Lord in world be much better wouldn't this world be much better oh the, the the poorness makes us rich i don't want to be self-centered self-satisfied i want to be poor in heart that i may have of god that i may have of his riches amen that i may have of all of his goodness amen and his greatness and his miracle uh work in power amen Matthew 23 and 12, and whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall it be exalted. And I wrote this down just right below it. Realizing our only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say that but then I want to know it in my heart. Realizing. See, I'm human. I like working things out on my own, myself. I'm human. I'm, I'm with you. I, I know how it is. But that's when most of the time I make a mess. But if I allow the Lord to help me and say, Lord, you're my only hope. You're the only hope for every situation in my life. Then everything works out to the good. When I don't see it, when I don't know it, I, I can't comprehend it, amen? I can't comprehend I told somebody this week, man, it's not what we see, it's, it's our faith. I may not see everything, but I can believe. I can believe, amen, humbling myself that I will be exalted, amen, believing in my heart. You see what I'm saying? I want to try to do it my own, but if I'll humble myself, that's humbling, and allow God to work it out. Things are much better. Things are much better. Things are much better. Things will go really good. Amen. Things will go beautiful. Things will go wonderful. Amen. That's part of being poor in spirit. Because this flesh, this flesh wants to do it. This flesh wants to do it. Amen. How true that is. I want to get it this morning. I want it to be in my heart. I want to humble myself that the Lord will exalt me in due season, due time. Amen. James 4 and 9. And we want to move on to blessed are those uh, who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. James 4 and 9. Grieve and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned in the morning and your joy into heaviness. Amen? Now, it's not talking about being sad all the time. Walking around like, you know, your head's hung down. That's not what it's talking about. Amen? What this is really talking about is we have a brokenness. That we, when we, when we get saved, there's a brokenness. Contrite spirit. But now we're talking about that we have a brokenness for others, that we have a, a heart heavy 
for our nation. Oh, for the leaders of our nation. Oh, that when we go in prayer, oh, that we just don't pray a simple little prayer. Because I remember the old timers, man, they wept, they cried, they prayed till the answer came. Amen. I want to get back to that. A heaven is a weeping. Oh, something inside of me that says, I want to reach heaven for our nation. Oh, we're going to celebrate a great independence uh, and I, oh, we're, we're on a collision course uh, oh that's not good amen uh, oh but can I tell you uh, I believe the body of Christ the church uh, of the living God can adapt a heaviness uh, a weeping uh, oh, and a brokenness uh, for our loved ones for our family our nation uh, those addicted on drugs amen uh, those that have a lifestyle uh, that's come Contrary to God's word, we can adapt a heaviness in a prayer time of all oh, that can just reach heaven and make a difference. Amen. 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 It's almost like the Lord is saying to me, What are, Paul, what are you doing about it? I can't point no fingers because all of them comes back to me. Paul, how is your heaviness? How is your weeping? Are you coming before me just to weep before me? Amen. I'm telling you, I know not much about our county, but I know one thing, it needs prayer. Oh, drugs are everywhere. Oh, it's destroying lives. Oh, and the only hope, the only hope, the only hope is Jesus. Amen. And I ain't got nothing against going to places to get help. I, I don't. I really don't. But in my spirit, I realize the only hope is Jesus. Amen. The only hope is Jesus. The only hope is the blood of Jesus. The only hope is emptying ourselves and allowing the Holy Spirit to come into our life. I realize and I know that. Lord, help Paul Bailey to have a heaviness and a weeping for somebody that really needs, desperately needs, Heaven to come down just for them. Amen. I'm preaching this morning. Oh, help us. Not to be sad all the time, but in our prayer time, there's a weeping. There's a mourning. There's a heaviness. There's a grieving in our spirit. Lord, help our nation. Lord, help our people. Lord, help our leadership of our country. Lord, help our little county. Lord, help our surrounding counties. Lord, help Floyd County. Amen. Wasn't that terrible? Wasn't that a terrible disaster? Lord, uh, help me. Uh, Lord, help me to grieve and help me to pray. Amen. Now listen, I'm with you. It's easy to pass that on up because it wouldn't nobody close to me. Amen. It was easy to pass that up. Uh, and but oh how that the I believe the Lord is instructing me. Uh, Lord, uh, Paul, have a heaviness, uh, have a brokenness for others and and, and just love others and enough uh, uh, to pray and have a broken heaviness for their heart, for their life, not for the riches of this world, but for their heart. Amen. For their heart, for their heart, for their heart. Wages of sin is death. Brings death, brings problems. Amen. And I wrote this down. There's so many drifting away. Wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. There's so many, and I can only speak for myself. I, I don't throw stones. I'll just speak to myself. There's so many right in front of us drifting away. And Lord, help me to have a brokenness for them, a humbleness for them. Help me to, to weep for them. Amen. Help me to have a weeping for them. To show the world there's hope. I have a smile, but on my altar there's some tears flowing. There's a brokenness in my heart. Oh, I see the need. I see the need. Amen. I see the heart. Jesus, what did He do in the garden? 
I know he said, let this cup pass from me, but I believe it's way more than that. He was weeping. He was weeping. He was sweating. Amen. I believe it's more than just, Lord, let this cup. We, we, we think about that all the time. But I believe there was some weeping. What was he weeping for? The soul of man, the heart of man, those in desperate need. Amen. Those hurting, those, his disciples. Amen. For Peter, amen. For Peter, for all those surrounding him, all those around him. Amen. I understand there's a season, in Ecclesiastes, there's a season and a time and a place for everything under the sun. Amen. I believe the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord, speaking to us. Let us weep. Let us be a Jeremiah. He wept, didn't he? He weeped. What is he called? The weeping prophet. He wept. This does not mean that we're weak. Amen. That means we got a war room. <laughs> Amen. We're declaring war on the enemy. And it's through prayers, through our tears, they flow. Amen. They flow. They flow. Amen. Amen. Let me find this scripture really quick. Amen. I want to read this to you. Amen. Take me just a second. Revelations 1 and 7, and I'll read it to you. Amen. Really quick. Hallelujah. Uh, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Remember little song, there'll be weeping, there'll be praying, there'll be shouting when our Lord shall come again. That's so true. That's so true. I tell you what I want to do. I want to weep now. And when he's, he's coming on the clouds of glory, I want to be shouting. I want to be praising. I want to be worshiping, amen. I want to be just crying out saying, oh, thank you, Lord, you're coming back. Oh, to receive me under yourself, uh, that where you are, I may be also. But now there's going to be some that ain't, right? I just read it. Amen. Let's watch and pray. Let's be ready. Ecclesiastes, Clifton, 31. Okay, I meant Jeremiah, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 31, 10 and 14. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off. And say, who, he who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of a stronger than he. Ain't that good? Therefore shall they come and sing in the height of Zion. That's what I want. Streaming to the goodness of the Lord for wheat, new wine, take notice of that, new wine and oil for the young of the flock and the herd. Their souls shall be like well-watered garden and they shall sorrow no more. Amen. At all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance. And the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning <laughs> into joy and comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will saturate, saturate the soul of the priest with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Wow, says the Lord. Anytime the Bible says, says the Lord, just go ahead and know it's true. We're going to be shouting at a while. We're going to be singing at a while. We're going to be rejoicing at a while. Amen. On the hills of glory, on the hills of glory. Those old timers realized something. 
That's the reason they could weep before God. They could have a brokenness for others because they realized they needed to take everybody they could with them. And there's going to be some shouting after a while, rejoicing and praising. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm so excited. I just want to be able to see revival. Bring, our praying, our weeping, our brokenness for others truly, really brings revival in our hearts and in our church and for so many out there. Amen. It really does. Oh, I ended it with a good verse. Amen. All the shouting and all the rejoicing and all the blessings of the Lord is coming. Amen. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Amen. If it wants to come, amen. I'll close right there. We'll pick.